What's going on everybody? Welcome to the 13th NLTK with Python for Natural Language Processing tutorial video. In this video we're going to be building on the last video and actually complete our Naive Bayes algorithm uh, to categorize things as either positive sentiment or negative sentiment. So first of all, the process usually goes as follows. You're going to have, when you have a data set like this that's a labeled data set, you're going to have two things. You're going to have a training, training set is equal to something and you're gonna have a testing set equal to something. You have to split them up and you don't want them to be the same data because that creates uh, a lot of bias. So the training set we're gonna say is feature sets and this will be the first 1900 feature sets. The testing set will be feature sets and that will be 1900 and on. So the first 1900 will train against and the second 1900 will test against. So when we train, we take the data, we feed it to the algorithm, we say here are the words, here is the words in the top 3,000 list of all words. These are how many times these most common words appear in negative reviews, here's how many times they appear in positive reviews. If they appear significantly more in negative reviews, that probably means that word is very important to a negative review and, and vice versa for positive reviews. So with the training set, that's how we train it. And then with the testing set, we feed through the feature sets and we don't tell the machine what category they are. We ask the machine to tell us what's that category. The machine tells us the category and then we compare it to the known category that we have and we see how accurate is the machine. Does it get it right more often than it doesn't? And if not, well, you've screwed up. So anyway, uh, that's that. So we're going to be using this algorithm called a naive Bayes algorithm. So this is a type of classifier that's going to use the uh, the actual just the Bayes algorithm which works on very strong independent assumptions for each feature and that's actually where it gets its naive name from basically and people sometimes people call it the stupid Bayes because it doesn't it's not really I mean like logically we can think through this algorithm and we can see all of the flaws that are contained within it but we can actually find that we have pretty good results with it and because the algorithm is so basic it's a really short algorithm and it doesn't require a lot of computation we can scale this algorithm to like massive proportions because it doesn't take much processing so uh, the, the Bayes algorithm is pretty simple you're gonna have basically the posterior and that's just like you know the likelihood equals uh, and it's gonna be prior occurrences uh, times likelihood and then all of that is going to be divided by the current evidence and that will be the the likelihood of something to be positive and then you would do the same thing for something to be negative um, and that's basically all it's done so it's a quick algorithm if you want to know more about that algorithm I highly suggest you just go google it and read like I don't know the Wikipedia page and maybe some articles on it and figure out more how it works but it really is actually quite the basic algorithm as far as learning algorithms are concerned uh, but it's again not necessarily the best algorithm it is just scalable and it's really easy to understand so once we we've gotten to this point now we're ready to actually create um, the the classifier that we want to use because we've got a training set we've got a testing set and now we're ready so first of all we have NLTK already imported so we'll just continue using that and we're going to say our classifier Classifier is going to equal NLTK, and we're going to use the naive Bayes classifier algorithm. We're going to dot train, and we're going to train against our training set. I'll just copy that and paste it. And now, um, first of all, what we can do is we can do a couple of things. First of all, we can check accuracy right away. So we've trained it. Now we can check. Now we can test it. So we can just say print. And we'll say uh, naive Bayes algo accuracy colon uh, comma. And then now we can use nltk.classify.accuracy. And we can run that. And what you the parameters that you pass through here are going to be what classifier are you using? And what's the set that you want to test against? That's testing set. And then we'll just multiply the answer by 100 uh, so it's in a percentage. Uh, and we'll even denote this as accuracy percent. Okay, so then, um, so we can do that, but we'll also add one more thing to it. We're gonna say classifier uh, dot show underscore most underscore informative underscore features. And we'll show the 15 most informative features. And let's go ahead and save and run that. Let me just check to make sure I don't have any major syntax errors. I don't think so, so let's save and run it. 
and we'll talk about this as we're waiting. So this will print. We don't need to print this anymore. Let's stop that from happening. Uh, so that's going to hog up a bunch of space real quick. But anyway, now it won't. Um, so this trains it. Uh, this runs the accuracy. And what this is going to do is tell us like the most popular words on both sides uh, and whether or not they tend to be positive or tend to be negative. So it looks like it probably is updating now. Right. So first of all, our naive Bayes algorithm accuracy percent uh, we're given here is 89%. Now, I will add uh, that depending on your samples, and actually let's go check and make sure we didn't screw anything up. This is actually a higher number than I normally see with the Bayes algorithm. Uh, you might find that yours is as low as like 60 or maybe even lower. Sometimes I've seen it hit 59 and stuff while I was setting this up. So. Um, just understand that this is highly volatile um, and don't be like ashamed if you didn't hit 89 you, you probably didn't do anything wrong um, anyway uh, so now we can look down here and we can see okay what are the most common words I can't believe 3000 is one of them I'm actually kind of shocked I want to go check and make sure <laughs> it is a little eerie that we use 3000 here but that shouldn't make any any difference at all anyway so we can see here um, one of the more, more important, the most important one is this word slip, and it appears 11.6 times more often than it does in a negative review. 3,000 is a negative one. I'm trying to think of 3,000, like why would 3,000 be one? Anyway, then you've got symbol, seamless, idiotic makes a lot of sense. This is a an, an unimaginative. Okay, these these ones make a lot of sense. Idiotic appears 8.5 times more often than it does in a neg or in a positive review unimaginative same thing 7.7 .7, and so on so we can actually end up using this later on down the road to uh, change the algorithm slightly but as you can see none of these contain uh, grammar and that's why grammar just didn't matter we, we have such a large data set we, we have 3,000 most common words that grammar is of course not on here because it, it isn't an informative feature so we can actually kind of use that to our advantage and since I'm talking, let's let's rerun this one more time before I cut this tutorial off. Um, I'll be really surprised if we get another high 80s return. So hopefully we'll get something a little more reasonable because it's just uncommon that you're gonna hit uh, that much accuracy. But anyway, so we'll just wait for this and then we'll talk about this. So yeah, 66%. Like I said, it's not as accurate as you as you would as 89. 89 is unlikely. <laughs> so anyway, we'll talk about how to improve the accuracy of this or at least improve the reliability because one of those two is really important. It's nice to have both, uh, but we definitely want to have reliability over random high accuracy points. So anyways, uh, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until next time.